What's up guys, it's Brian again from Lake Hicker Scuba and Marine. If you are new to our channel, do me a huge favor, hit this little subscribe button right here and ding that little bell as well. That way you guys are going to be notified every time we upload new content. Now we are on part six of my personal rig rundowns and if you can't tell here behind me today, we're going to be looking at exposure suits and I've got a ton of exposure suits. I've got three different dry suits and I've got a bunch of different wet suits. Now some of these suits I'm currently not using, so I'm only going to be showing you the ones that I'm currently using for 2022. If I showed you all these suits and explain why this video would be well over an hour long but I'm gonna try to keep it as short as I can and just show you each suit individually and talk about what I use them for. So with that being said let's go over to the rack and let's get started. So the first suit that we're going to look at is the Marez Ultra Skin and I've actually got two pieces. I've got the top here it's just a long sleeve top and I've got the Ultra Skin shorts to go with it and what I actually use this for is a couple of different things. Obviously when I was down in the tropics this is what I dive with. I do believe in wearing some type of exposure suit and I really like the Ultra Skin because simply there's no evaporation so when you get out of the water there's no chance of you really getting cold while still wearing it. A lot of you guys know if you've got a wetsuit on you've got to pull it down or get it off your core because it will evaporate on the surface and it will make you colder. Well in the tropics these give you the right amount of protection say from jellyfish or even just ultraviolet protection and they're going to keep you warm in the water it's a great alternative to neoprene and then of course when you get out of the water it keeps you warm as well now the shorts i wear on rare occasions as well um, i typically would rather wear swimming trunks but if i need to wear them say underneath a wetsuit or something like that i will wear the shorts and those work great if i am wearing say a full meal wet, uh, full say three meal or something those work great especially if i need to change i am an old school diver i don't wear anything under my wet set wetsuit but with this right here, I can actually change if I need to change in front of people on a boat or something like that. So I like the shorts for that. But that's my ultra skin suit that I'm currently wearing for 2022. All right, guys, the next suit up is a three mil from Marez. This is their Inflex series, and you'll probably notice that it's kind of yellow. Uh, these suits do not come yellow. They actually come black and gray for the males. And unfortunately, the pool that we use has a ton of chlorine in it, and it does bleach these suits out. If you've been following our channel for a very long time, you'll notice I go through three mil wetsuits like they are candy. Uh, I typically get a brand new one every three months, and it's just because the pool that we use and that we train in they bleach them out very very quickly and that's exactly what happened to this now the three mil is really great for me when i'm teaching we do use an indoor heated pool year round and it's great it gives me the right amount of warmth that i need and right amount of protection and so that's why i choose a three mil jumpsuit for that now i will use it say if it's in really warm water if i'm doing open water training dives with students i'll use it as well but you'll notice that as we go up in thickness i do have some of my favorite suits that i'll use for open water training dives but this is pretty much my pool suit and i believe it's just about time to get a new one all right guys the next suit up is my marez 543 and this is from their flex align here um, this suit is discontinued they made two versions of this they made a 543 and they made an 865 if you're not familiar what the flex series is and how those numbers work basically here on the core it's five millimeters it's four from the shoulders to the elbows and then three down and then same thing five on the core four from the waist to the knees and then three all the way down as well and i really like this suit this is my primary suit that i'm going to use for open water training dives in warm environments especially if i've got a lot of students in the water for a lengthy period of time so if i've got multiple groups of divers going in to do their training dives and i'm going to be in the water the entire time i like this 543 because it gives me the flexibility on the arms and legs that i need but i still have that core warmth especially for warm water i can double this up with a hooded vest which i'll show you here briefly and it um, it's an all-around great suit keeps me warm keeps me protected and i still have the flexibility that i need but this is not the only five mil that I've got because the next suit I'm going to show you is probably my most favorite five mil on the market. All right, guys, so my next five mil that I've got here is the Graflex five mil from the Marez line. And guys, I got to be honest, this is probably one of the warmest five mils I've ever worn. Um, this particular suit is five mil thick, but what makes it so warm is the seams here. As you can see, the seams are sealed all the way through. Plus the internal part of this suit, and I'll see if I can show you really quick, 
It's got a felt liner here. It's almost like a fleece and felt put together. Um, it actually reminds me of one of the suits I had back in the early 90s that I used to wear. They used to line suits like that, and I absolutely love this suit here. It is very, very warm. There is very limited amount of water that flows through it, so it's almost considered a semi-dry just based off the construction alone, but I really love this suit. It is extremely warm. There are times when I could use a slightly thicker suit, such as a 7 mil, if I'm wearing my other 5 mil suit, but this one right here is my go-to if I want warmth and flexibility all around. And I can really wear this, say, early spring all the way until very late fall, even possibly early winter time. Now, they do make this in a 3, 5, and 7. I'm currently using the 5 because I think the 5s are the most practical out there for warmth and flexibility as well. But that's the Mariaz Graphex 5. All right guys, so the next suit up is the fire skin from Mariaz. Now here in the States, we get the ultra skin. We can't necessarily get the fire skin. Um, this was a freebie that I received from um, a student one time. He had sent it to me. I have several other hooded vests and he found this one and sent it. And this was actually before the ultra skins came out. So that's why I've got it and I still use it today. I absolutely love hooded vests, especially if you're wearing say a three or a five mil. Um, it just gives you that extra little bit of core warmth that you need. Plus having the hood attached makes it very easy. You could very easily pop your hood on and off um, whether you need it. Maybe you're going below the thermocline just for a few minutes. You throw your hood up. Maybe you come back up above the thermocline, you can pull your hood down. And it works great too in the tropics. You could wear, say, the ultra skin shorts and you could throw a hooded vest on as well. But I absolutely love my hooded vest for additional core warmth and the ability to pull the hood on and off throughout the dive when I need it. All right, guys, so the first dry suit up on the list here is the OS Systems DSRT. This is a public safety built or purposely built dry suit here from OS Systems. This is a great company. I've been with them for several years, uh, really since Lake Hicker Scuba has been in business, we've been with them. And I've had several of their suits over the years. Currently, this is the model that I still have that's still in operation. This is a front entry dry suit, so it zips horizontally across the front, and then you have straps that go around to really pull that material in. Now, the reason I like this suit for public safety is really not just the color, but how well it's built. This is a bi-limit. That means that there's two pieces of material glued together, and it's going to be a little bit more durable um, and hold up to better hazmatic um, situations than what a typical tri-lim is. No, it's not going to be as good as the vulcanized rubber, but then again, nobody really likes the vulcanized rubber. But I also like how orange it is, how bright it is. It's got reflective stripes everywhere. We do a lot of nighttime operations, and of course, this suit really comes in handy because I'm going to be very visible at night. But I got replaceable neck seals, replaceable wrist seals. I do have a pocket there on the side, and of course, all my dry suits, you'll notice, they'll have the same theme. They all have attached boots, which make my life a whole lot easier. Easier, especially in a quick deploy situation, I can just throw it on and go. But that's the OS Systems DSRT dry suit. All right, guys, so the next dry suit up, of course, is my Scuba Force Expedition dry suit, and I've really come to love this dry suit. I use it for a lot of salvage work. I do use it for some of my fun diving as well, but talk about a well-constructed suit. I can't talk highly enough of this Scuba Force suit, man. They really knocked it out of the park with this system. Um, just to go over some of the features, of course, it is a front, uh, front entry horizontal front or a diagonal front entry there. I do have replaceable neck seals and replaceable wrist seals as well. Now this particular one I do have set up with dry gloves, um, which I personally like as well. It's got some very large spacious pockets here on both thigh legs and you've got several different pockets as well. So you got large cargo pockets plus you got zipper pockets up top. Each pocket is going to have a little piece of bungee in it and I've got several different bolt snaps that I can snap off accessories and things like that. As usual, I got my attached boots there. I do have reinforced butt pad and knee pads on this system as well. And it's just an all around great suit. One thing that I've really come to love is these neck gaiters. Even in my career, I've never been a big fan of these neck gaiters, but I'm going to be honest with you. This thing is absolutely phenomenal, especially if you're not wearing, say, a specific dry suit hood. You can take the bib and you can shove it in there. Plus, this keeps a lot of that water when it when you get exposed to the water here around your neck, if you're a dry suit diver, you'll understand it tends to be really cold. With this neck gaiter there, it keeps me very warm, especially in colder environments. And guys, I can't talk highly enough. This is probably one of my favorite dry suits out there. All right, guys, so the last dry suit up on the list is my Comfort Zone Scuba dry suit. Now, Comfort Zone makes several different models. This is their baseline model, although I have upgraded several different things on it, and we'll kind of talk about those upgrades. But it's just a basic neoprene or pre-crushed neoprene dry suit. That means it's a 7 mil suit 
that's being pre-crushed to three mil. You're still going to have the comfort um, of a three mil, but you're going to have the warmth of a seven mil. And I absolutely love the suit. But starting at the top, we got soft seals both for the neck and wrist. And I really like the fact that if something happens, a little bit of aqua seal goes a long way to fix it. You don't really have to do much patching on this suit. Now I have changed out the inflator and the exhaust part on it. Uh, just because I damaged it at one point, but I absolutely love the suit. One thing that we didn't talk about in the other suits, they all have suspenders in them. This one, I actually had its suspenders installed. So if you see these little round circles, those are patches on the inside where the suspenders are glued to the suit um, or the patch where the suspenders clip off to those patches. So I really like those. I do have reinforced knee pads. These are the Kevlar knee pads. Do have a pocket on the side. And then of course, you guys know I'm lazy. I absolutely prefer hard boots pre-attached to the suit itself. It's got a horizontal back entry here, so it does take a, a buddy to help you get in it, but it's warm, it's flexible, and it does everything I need it to do. And if you guys see in our videos, I dive the suit a lot for fun dives because that's exactly what this suit is all about. It's about warmth, comfort, and just having a good fun time underwater. All right, let's take a quick look at undergarments real quick. This is a very old Polar Tech undergarment. This is a double layer fleece jumpsuit. Um, and like I said, it is Polar Tech. This is from OS Systems here. I've had this since probably about 2012 and it still works very good. Super stretchy, gives me the right amount of warmth. This is typically what I'll wear in the OS Systems dry suit or the Scuba Force dry suit, which I do have a Scuba Force undergarment I'll show you as well. But this is kind of my go-to, just quick, easy throw on and is very, very warm. All right, guys, so the next undergarment is the Scuba Force undergarment, and they actually come in two different styles. You can get the X-Pure uh, series or you can get the Arctic series. Uh, both are going to be extremely warm for you. This happens here. I believe this is the Arctic series here. It's, once again, it's a double or triple layer fleece suit. It's got a couple extra padding pieces here in the core area to help keep you warm as well. It does have grommets here if you're running a P-valve. It helps for routing the hose for that. It's got pockets throughout, so if you're on the land need to store something, you can as well. But the Scuba Force um, Arctic line is an absolute must if you're going to be diving in cold water. All right, guys, so the last undergarment that we're going to look at is a no frills, no thrill, single layer fleece jumpsuit. This is from uh, Polar Tech once again, or you can get it through many manufacturers. This one actually comes from OS Systems here, but it's literally nothing more than just a single layer fleece top and a single layer fleece bottom. And of course, I wear this with my neoprene dry suit because I love the flexibility of it. I love how easy it is to move through it. And it gives me that right amount of warmth when I put that cold air in. Yes, even in a dry suit, you're still putting cold air in your suit because the air is cold from the conduction and convection rate of your tank being in cold water. So it actually protects my chest when I hit that inflator valve as well. So that is my no frills, no thrill, single layer fleece top and bottom. All right, guys, so we're going to wind this video down with the last bit of exposure suits that I wear, or exposure protection. Over here on the left, I have my dry gloves. These are what I wear with my Scuba Force dry suit. I back them up with just some fleece liners uh, for warmth inside the dry gloves. I have a set of Akona 3 mil gloves. I absolutely love these. I don't actually remember. Akona is the brand, but I don't remember the style of these gloves. But they do have the Kevlar line on them. And I typically wear these with my neoprene dry suit. Absolutely love these gloves. They have the same seal Skin as what the wrist seals are so my hands barely get wet and they are three mil cool little fun fact in really really cold water if i'm in a neoprene dry suit i still typically only wear a three mil glove and then moving on over to the sea soft stealth threes this is typically what i wear if i'm in a wetsuit and need some gloves um, i love these gloves too i used to be a sea soft dealer I love just how well constructed Seasoft gloves are. They do make a glove very similar to this one that has the Kevlar on the outside. Unfortunately, I've never really had good luck out of them. So I keep these for any time that if I'm not needing to work on something, I'll wear them. But any other time I have these because of the Kevlar lining. And then my hood's a good choice. I've got two. I have a custom built hood with a zipper here on the back. This is from OS Systems. Anytime you get a OS Systems dry suit, get you a custom hood to go with it. And I promise you, you won't be uh, dissatisfied with it. And then my comfort zone scuba, this is my full face mask hood. And this is what I wear a lot of times in that dry suit as well. You'll notice both of these are dry suit hoods. If you don't know the difference between 
a wetsuit and a dry suit hood. Basically, a dry suit hood has no bib to where a wetsuit does um, or a wetsuit hood does. I don't really wear a bibbed hood anymore because I have that hooded vest that I showed you earlier in the video. So these are for dry suit. The hooded vest is what I wear in a wetsuit a lot of times. And then, of course, my boots of choice are the Mares Trilastic 5 mils. Uh, I believe these are size 8s, what I wear. And I've got several different pairs of these. I've got one that I teach with, so they're pretty much faded out like my 3 mil wetsuit is. Um, these are the ones I wear in open water, and then always I have a brand new set just waiting on standby if I ever need them. So there you go, guys. That is my exposure suits for 2022 that I'm currently using. I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you got any questions on any of the suits that I showed in the video, drop me a comment down below and I'll try to answer the question the best I can. But also let me know down in the comments what you are currently wearing for 2022, if you're in a wetsuit, a dry suit, or both, and what's your favorite model out there as well. Because I really hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, give me a big thumbs up. Definitely share it as well. As always, make sure you follow us on Instagram and Twitter, like us on Facebook, pin us on Pinterest, subscribe to us here on YouTube, and as always, guys, we appreciate your business.